So a lot of our people is taking the old Christianity baggage, the old Muslim baggage, and bringing it in to this thing now, thinking that that's acceptable. It's not. But let's go there. Let's go to um, Luke 5 and 36. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. So you put something old with new. That's like, you know, I'm a simple terms. You got some new little battery operated device and it's got three old batteries and you put one new battery in there. They're going to mess up. They're going to mess the one new battery up very fast. It's going gonna, it's gonna to drain it. Or well, it's like you got a um, a new fit. You you call yourself getting fly. Speak on the worldly term. You call yourself being fly. You got a new fit, and then you got some raggedy shoes or some old shoes. It ain't go. It's gonna make the outfit look tacky. It ain't gonna fly right. Exactly. Thirty six. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man put up a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both. The new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeth not with the old. <laughs> so these things they don't agree. Hit <laughs> the outfit looking down like that's don't go. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm fly. This is you know um, I'm coochie down, and then I got some joints with my toes out. That don't go. Read. And no man put up new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. So, again, why would you bring all of that old garbage into the new you with the new understanding of who you really are? You've been tricked and deceived out of your heritage, your culture, the whole nine, the whole shebang, your whole life. Now you find out who you are, but you still want to bring along the madness. You still want to act and, and try to find loopholes to be able to go to the club, to go to the casinos. You still want to get, instead of just doing what you know, still want to find loopholes in this stuff, man. It ain't no loopholes. You can't get around it. Read, let's finish this out. No man also, but the new wine, I mean, uh, 38. 38. Luke 5 and verse 38. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. For he saith, the old is better. The old is better. But we know our old man will have us right now close to the pit. My old man, I'm going to speak for myself right now, because the stuff I used to be doing, Straight madness. And I thought in the church, I thought the only thing I come every Sunday, pay my money, boom, I'm good. As soon as I walk back out the door, it's back to the old man. But see, back in the in the church or in, in the world, we was taught that we was Gentiles. That's right. And so all this stuff, as far as the law, it didn't pertain to us because we didn't know that we were the true Israelites. But exactly. when you come into this understanding, you got to understand that now you got responsibilities and roles to, to follow out or to carry out. You got duties, so to speak, that you got to uphold. Right. But a lot of us now, with even the understanding, what we use as a means, as a crutch, to hold on to what we're doing. What's that term they call? It's called, it's called grace. Grace. That is one of the most abused Things in the scriptures, not realizing that when you got a bill at DTE and they tell you, you got 10 day grace period. After the 10 days, if you don't pay the bill, it's consequences. They're going to shut it down. So do we want the most high to shut us down because we're trying to get by? With grace, I say absolutely not. Certainly not. So they'll say that the New Testament is the first thing that brought about grace. Let's show you that that's a lie. 
Let's go to Genesis 6 and 9. I believe 6 and 9. No, yeah, six and six and eight. Genesis chapter six and verse seven. And the Most High said, "I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth." So this is this was pre-flood, pre-flood time, all the way back with Noah. Read, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Go ahead. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Most High. But Noah found what? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Most High. So Noah found grace all the way back here. Like, like Again, a lot of people always tell you that grace didn't come about until then. Noah found grace right here. We're going to find Joshua found grace when he was in the prison system. This was it, Grace was always there. But now, again, we got people who misuse this thing and use it as a license to sin, actually telling lies on Hamashiach, saying, he gave you a license to sin. He nailed them laws to the cross, and y'all putting yourself under that stuff. Oh, y'all are backwards. What we finna see. Let me read this up. Go ahead. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Most High. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with the Most High. And Noah walked with the Most High. But he Noah was what? A just man and perfect in his generations. Exactly. So he was he wasn't sitting back trying to rely on grace. Noah was perfect, just like Enoch. They say Enoch walked with him. Right here, Noah get to walk with him, but it wasn't in the same sense. But he still was perfect, and he was an upright and just man. He wasn't using it as a means to get by, like the new people are always trying to, trying to get by with something. So even if he fell short, just him being just, he was able to get grace. And this is how the grace was provided for him because he was a just and righteous brother that was perfect in his generations. Exactly. So let's go to the new. A lot of people like to misuse Paul's words and, 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 and put stuff on him. But it really ain't lying on Hamashiach saying that he took this stuff away. Let's go to um, Romans 6 and 1. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue? Shall we continue sinning so that grace may abound? Go ahead. The most high forbid. The most high forbid that you keep sinning just because you up under grace right now. He forbid it. Read on. How shall we that are dead to sin, live any longer therein. So Paul is saying, once you put that, you killed off the old man, he's dead. Now you a new person in Hamashiach. How are you going to continue living in sin? Making excuses about it. Trying to use grace as a means to get by with it. Read on. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized and Yahushua, the Messiah, were baptized into his death. Read on. Therefore, we are buried with him by, baptize, by baptism into death. That like the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In newness of life, meaning now, before we knew better, we was doing wilding out, doing all that garbage we was doing. But now that we know better... We are supposed to do better. Really, really that simple. Jump down to verse 14. Matter of fact, 13. Neither yield. I'm going to go to 12. Let not sin, therefore reign 
in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Go ahead. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto the Most High. Yield yourself unto the Most High, read. As those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto the Most High. See, Paul, no, they will never read none of this stuff. They won't read this. They'll read the other stuff, but they won't read all of this. Keep going. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. So he says you're not under the law, but under grace. Well, I'm not under the death penalty because I haven't killed nobody. Or done what it will take for me to be under the death penalty. But guess what? If we do something that warrants us to be under the death penalty, then you under that law. So of course we ain't under that law right now. Because we're not trying our we're not trying to break it. We don't know. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Shall we sin because we ain't under the law but under grace? Read the last piece out. The most high forbid. Who forbid? The most high forbid. The most high forbid it that you keep sinning and you knowing that you know better. But again, let's keep going. Let's go to um let's go to Hebrews ten and twenty six. Hebrews 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So when you know better and you go and do something, you just wiped all that he did out. And every time you do something, while the could that spirit still work with you? You're going to get that fearful feeling in your within yourself. When you keep doing something and you know better when you're trying to abuse grace. Read that next verse. 27. But a certain, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fury indignation which shall devour thus adversaries. Go ahead. But he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So if you got caught breaking the law back in Moses' days, you got stoned to death on the spot by, the, by two or three witnesses. I mean, off the... Bam! Go ahead. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trotten underfoot the Son of the Most High, and have counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done the spite unto the Spirit of grace. So if, if you got all of this done to you dealing with Moses, and Moses didn't die for you, but how much more worse the punishment going to be for you stepping on Hamashiach's how much more are you going to be punished for going against him? I don't think too many people want to really find that out, man. So, again, we definitely got to put all that old mess that we was doing down, change up our walk, and walk according. Other than that, we're going to be in danger of the lake of fire. You got something? Yeah, I mean, basically, we supposed to be doing this out of love, out of love for the Most High, and um, let's let's tap on that. Uh, what's love for the Most High? Okay. Where that's First uh, John. Yeah, because again, a lot of times people uh. Will, when they, uh, when you come into the truth, like a guy like me, just coming into the truth, I wanted to make sure that I was walking according to the to the laws and the commandments to the best of my ability, searching the scriptures, looking for truth, and my role, my position, and trying to 